Hey, welcome back to Play and Trade Guitars. I'm John, that's Zach behind the camera, and this is Play and Trade Guitars, where we play it and trade it. Checking out the brand new Gibson USA Theodore, a historic guitar originally designed by Ted McCarty in 1957, but never put in production. Well, now Gibson USA has put that into production, and I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know when we put it on the bench and pull it apart, and then of course we're gonna plug it in and play it. <laughs> But at the top, if you're in the market for this guitar or any other gear, click to buy new gear using our link. You help us make these demos when you buy new gear using our link, so thank you. And in the States, you'll get fast free shipping and easy payment plans. In Europe, you can use our Toman link down below too. Also be in it to win it, we're giving away an American-made Martin D28 when we hit 100,000 subscribers to win that acoustic guitar. Just make sure you're subscribed. Hit subscribe now, turn on notifications, and enter via Gleam. All that is pinned in the comments or down in the description. All right, without further ado, let's take a first look at the Gibson USA Theodore. I'm pumped about this one. All right, I really like the look of this. They make it in three finishes. You can click our link to see current availability, all the finish options. And I'll tell you what, the late 50s were an incredible time for electric guitars. You had so many designs coming out that really became timeless. And you also had a few that were ahead of their time, like the Explorer and Flying V. This was kind of in that batch of creations from the famous Ted McCarty. Gibson Custom did a run of these in 2022 that were much more expensive. So I'm excited that they're now available as a regular run from Gibson USA. And uh, I'll tell you what, it looks really intriguing. So why don't we head to the bench and pull it apart before we plug it in and play it. I would call this an Explorer hockey stick headstock, but Gibson calls it the scimitar, which is a curved blade or sword, and you can kind of get that when you look at it. It's got six uh, mini Grover tuners on here, a mahogany neck, and we'll get a measurement on the neck itself in a second, but nice bound fretboard, rosewood, 22 frets, acrylic trapezoid inlays, and then it's got this mahogany body and it's got some nice kind of curves going on here. You have the Florentine cutaway in a, in a unique shape you won't see on any other Gibson. Uh, gives you access all the way up to the upper frets. And then you got this kind of rounded body profile here, which is kind of cool. So I would estimate it's definitely thicker than an SG. We'll get a measurement on that as well. And then pickups, you've got Gibson 57 in neck and a 57 plus in bridge. We'll get readings on everything. So let's get the strings out of the way and see where all this stands. It's kind of exciting to be working with such a new, so to speak, a new old Gibson model. Uh, lots of differences on this one. I guess comparable to an SG or a you know, double cut Les Paul Junior Special, but let's see what it does in its own right. Nut comes in at a fairly wide 1.72 inches, up to a slimmer 0 0.8 inches at the first fret, 0 0.89 at the 12th, so slim taper territory here. So body thickness, this will be interesting. 1.52 inches thick, that compares to about uh, 1.35 inches thick on an SG, so a little bit thicker mahogany body here. I really like the shape of this pickguard too, that's super unique. Let's flip over these humbuckers. We got a 57 classic in neck. You can also see a long neck tenon on this guitar. Typically with a double cutaway like in an SG like this, you need that long tenon to support that neck joint all the way up at the upper fret register there. And then flipping over bridge, we have a 57 plus. So maybe a little hotter, we'll flip on the multimeter and find out. Bridge comes in at 7.8, 7 7.5 in neck, and 3.8 combined. Lifting up the control cavity cover, pretty simple under here. You got hand wired, uh, you do have an orange drop capacitor, that's nice, and then 500K Gibson pots. Nice and simple and clean. All right, feels like a good weight, probably a little bit heavier than an SG given the extra body thickness, but geez, not much. I mean, just under seven pounds, six pounds, 15 ounces, we'll call it uh, 6.9 pounds. And then initial reactions. Good ring noise, comfortable, uh, yeah, slim tapered neck. And I'll tell you what, it feels good. I like, I like actually the, I, I like the rounded body here. It actually feels kind of nice. It's something kind of unique from Gibson. So here comes my favorite part. Let me remind you, if you're in the market for this guitar or any others, click to buy new gear using our link. It really does help us make these videos. So thank you for doing that. I'm gonna get this plugged in. I'm gonna show you clean tones. We'll dirty it up and then we'll let it sing behind a track. On the other side of the playing demos, I'll give you my raw, honest reaction to playing the Theodore, along with the final score, so stay tuned. Drop a comment as we go, let's plug in and have some fun.
right, you stuck with me to the end. So I'm going to tell you what I thought of the Theodore. Drop a comment and tell me what you thought. What do you think of the sounds? I'm going to tell you my final score. I based that on three main categories, overall playability, overall sound, and overall value. So let's talk about playability. Um, nothing really got in my way, so to speak. I will tell you that compared to an SG, when I'm in the very, very top register, this neck joint here, this body joint, is a little bit higher than an SG. So whereas I got an SG over my shoulder, I can see it now, the body meets the 22nd fret. In this case, the body is meeting the, uh, what is that, 22nd, 21st, 20th? Almost the 19th, actually, actually the, I would call it the 19th. So what that kind of translates to is just a little less grab when you're in the upper register. You'll hit that barrier quicker, if that makes sense. It's not a deal breaker. I think the guitar sounded great. Uh, but from a playability standpoint, I also enjoyed not only the weight at a lightweight 6.9 pounds, um, I also like the six on a side tuners. It's actually fairly easy. It's like tuning a fender, right? When you got all the tuners on one side, something about that just seems easier to me. And I also like the no nonsense stripped down approach. It's like a Les Paul special, um, but with just two controls. I mean, it's just got volume and tone, that's it. And then the three-way toggle. I like all that. Uh, let's talk sounds. I love the 57s. I think the 57s are a nice pairing. Also, historically, it makes sense. It was designed in 57, so that worked out. Uh, 57s sound real nice in here. And I got good tones out of this. I thought with Overdrive, it really had a sweet, uh, beautiful voice. I don't know if it sings quite like an SG. It's maybe a little bit darker to my ear, but I like it. It's got a really cool characteristic, characteristic voice to it. I'm thinking to myself, as much as I love the 57s, I could really see this guitar going with a pair of P90s. I think this guitar with a pair of P90s would really be intriguing. That would really be cool to check out. But the Humbuckers, the 57s, I like them. Talking scores on those, overall playability. Uh, I'm going to give it an I'm going to give it an 8.5 on overall playability. When it comes to sound with this pickup configurations, I love the pickups. It was nice and mellow and singing um, and a little bit darker, but like in a cool kind of sultry way. I'm going to go ahead and give it a 9.0 on overall sound. And then overall value. This is the same price as one of my favorite Gibson USA guitars, which is the Gibson SG61 standard. Both are 19.99. I tell you between the two. I would still pick the SG Standard 61. However, I really love just that, from a historic and collectability standpoint, the fact that they're making these. Tim McCarty was onto so much, but he was onto something with this. And I do think that this deserved to be built because it is really cool. My only thing is maybe I would prefer it with P90s, but you know, I can't really fault it. Um, it's a really cool design and I don't have much to complain about. It's a good price relative to the whole Gibson world today. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a 9.2 on overall value. It's gonna bring us to an 8.9 on the Gibson USA Theodore. Let me know what you think. And remember, if you're in the market for this guitar, click to buy using our link. You really do help us. So thanks for buying any new gear using any of our links. It all gets to us. It all helps you get new gear with fast free shipping, easy payment plans, and helps us make these demos. So thanks for doing that. We're also giving away a Martin D28. Yep, American made Martin when we hit 100,000 subscribers. So hit subscribe, do us a favor, help us grow this channel, spread the word. Hit subscribe, turn on notifications, and enter via Gleam if you haven't done so already. All right, for Plain Trade Guitars, I'm John. That's Zach behind the camera, and this has been the Gibson USA Theodore. See you on the next video. Thanks for hanging out.